position, who's hitting 293. Myers, 284. Cronenworth, who I think could be Rookie of the Year in some leagues, 325. Profar's average up to 233. That's only significant because just a couple weeks ago it was around 195. And Grisham hitting last is in 267. That's a lineup, guys. That's a lineup that rivals the Dodgers. So, I just think you've got to be looking at the Padres. The West Coast teams this year to me are the dominant teams. The A's picking up La Stella. Laureano, Kenya, Olsen finally starting to hit a little bit. No great averages here, but clutch hitting. Bassett goes seven innings, no walks, four strikeouts. Deekman, no, a, a zero ERA in relief all year. And Trevino pitches the last inning, a 6 nothing shutout against the Astros. And just in that division alone, Oakland now leads the Astros, and the Astros have lost five straight by four and a half games. Again, less than 20 games left to go on the season, unless you're a team like the Cardinals, who has to play a lot of doubleheaders. But we're three weeks away from finishing the season. That's right. Three weeks away. Fantasy, reality, however you want to say it, you're three weeks away from the season being over. And these are some real fights to make the playoffs. So that's just a look at some baseball action. I want to talk about my 14-team NFL half-point PPR draft from last night. And I got my grade from Yahoo. It's a Yahoo League. And I got an A. I had the 14th pick out of 14. And I'm watching all these players just go and go and go. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, who am I going to get? So... Let's do it. I'll just go through my lineup instead of my round per round, okay? So it's a one quarterback league. And at quarterback, I have Russell Wilson, North Carolina State University great. Seattle Seahawk all pro. You know, I love Russell Wilson. He does it through the air. He does it on the ground. He's clutch. One of the top five fantasy quarterbacks, and he's on my team. At wide receiver, I got a loot here, okay? I've got Keenan Allen from the Los Angeles Chargers. I've got Michael Gallup from the Dallas Cowboys. I have Will Fuller the fifth from the Houston Texans. Emmanuel Sanders from the New Orleans Saints. CeeDee Lamb from the Dallas Cowboys. And finally, Jerry Judy, rookie wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. I love my wide receivers. At running back, I'm not very deep, but I'm very talented. James Conner for the Steelers, who all reports out of Pittsburgh are raving about Conner and his work. He's healthy. Improved offensive line. I'm going to talk about the Steelers' offensive line in just a moment. And I have the great... Ezekiel Elliott from the Dallas Cowboys as my other running back. In backup, not a lot of depth. I told you, Duke Johnson from Houston. And I added Benny Snell as my handcuff. I was going to add the Dallas handcuff, but he was gone. But I got Benny Snell, who is a no doubt number two. That's in quotation marks. Uh, He has had an impressive camp. Shown improved receiving ability. So Snell has locked down the backup role behind Connor and is expected to see a heavy workload. Connor is in the Steelers rejuvenated offense. So I think I did pretty well getting Snell and Duke Johnson as backups. Duke Johnson more of a pass catching back. At tight end, I went early and I got Greg Kittle. I, I I think Greg Kittle is one of the top two, if not the top tight end in the NFL. And backing him up, I have O.J. Howard. This is a league with kickers and defenses and defensive players. So I have Van Der Esch from Dallas as my linebacker. The Kansas City defense. And Fairbang Barn from Houston as my kicker. 
So those are my draft picks in my draft last night. Uh, I'd love to maybe trade a wide receiver where I've got some really good talent for a, maybe a backup running back or a lesser RB1. Uh, that's always a possibility. But overall, with a grade A picking 14, I'm very satisfied and very happy with my draft. So I want to take a look with you at offensive lines and why offensive lines are important is because if you're going to run the ball or pass the ball, you need blocking. And the number one offensive rated line in the NFL, I'm going to go through several in the top 10 this morning. I may not go through all top 10, but I'm going to go through several of these in the top 10 as I have graded them out. But number one to me, unanimous, is the Indianapolis Colts. Quentin Nelson has taken this subpar unit to an elite unit almost instantaneously with him coming over to the team. The Colts had a bottom 10 offensive line in just as late as 2017. After that year, they added Nelson and became all of a sudden one of the league's best offensive lines. Now, Nelson's arrival also happened to coincide with improved health of players. Only three Indianapolis linemen played even 400 snaps in 2007, but then five each played 1,000-plus snaps in 2019. So they've had consistency and they've had health across that offensive line as well. Now, you always want to be careful predicting health to continue. I know that. I got it. Okay? But as long as the Colts unit does stay healthy and stays on the field, I think the Colts' offensive line is the best unit in the NFL. Second to the Colts, I believe, are the New Orleans Saints. And the Saints let Larry Warford go in free agency, ostensibly replacing him with first-round pick Cesar Ruiz. Now, Ruiz played center at Michigan, but will likely slide into the right guard spot with New Orleans. And Ruiz aside... This New Orleans Saints unit has has extreme continuity and maybe the best pair of tackles in Teron Armstead and Ryan Ramzik. Now, they also get the benefit of Drew Brees having maybe the quickest release in the league, but irregardless, this Saint offensive line has provided Drew Brees the opportunity to face the lowest pressure rate in the league last year. And I look for that to continue again in 2020. Now I want to talk about what I think is the third best offensive line, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. If not for the retirement of Travis Frederick, who made his fifth Pro Bowl in 2019, the Cowboys may well have had the league's top offensive line. Frederick, whose Pro Bowl season was his fifth straight, now I'm ignoring 2018, that's the year he didn't play because of having the Gullian Barre syndrome. He'll be replaced by some combination, though, this year of veteran Joe Looney, who started in Frederick's absence in 2018, and rookie fourth round center Tyler Bladzik out of Wisconsin. Bladzik's going to be a really good center. I just don't know if now the Cowboys will put him in that position this early in his career as a, a first year rookie. But even with that, The Cowboys, I believe, have the third best offensive line in the NFL. What does that mean? Let's look at these top three. It means running backs. It means passing will be more effective because Phillip Rivers in Indianapolis, he will benefit from this great offensive line. The Saints, their running attack with Kamara. Drew Brees already has a quick release. It's going to give more yards to the wide receivers, Sanders, and, of course, Michael Thomas. And then in Dallas, this great offensive line, Zeke Elliott's a big winner, but so are the wide receivers. And C.D. Lamb, the rookie wide receiver that you've heard so much about, this is one of the reasons I think C.D. Lamb could be a 1,000-yard receiver in his rookie year because the offensive line is so strong. Let's go through just a few more offensive lines before I get out of here this morning. I want to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
a top 10 O-line. Maurice Pouncey made his eighth Pro Bowl last year. That's four in a row. Although that was as much as a reputation pick as a production one since Pouncey missed three games and played his fewest amount of games since 2013. Still, the Pittsburgh Steeler offensive line carries elite continuity. I talked about that with Indianapolis. They have Pouncey, Alejandro Villanueva, David DeCastro. They're all entering their seventh year with the Steelers. And right tackle Matt Feeler is there in his fifth year. Now the left guard slot will be filled by some combination of either rookie Kevin Dotson and free agent signee Stefan Wisniewski. But the Steeler offense is strong. Look for the running game to be reestablished this year. And with Roethlisberger back pulling the trigger at quarterback, the Steelers will be a team to be reckoned with not only in their division, but throughout the playoffs this year. A couple more good O-lines. I want to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, as the offseason last year began, I would have said this unit in Philadelphia was probably a top three offensive line. But that was before the news hit of right guard Brandon Brooks tearing his Achilles, and that cost him the 2020 season. Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson are still around, and so this offensive line will not dip but so far. And the possibility of a Jason Peters reunion, and he remains unsigned, could help as well. But Brooks' absence with that Achilles means the Eagles will have a good line, but probably no longer a best-in-the-league one. All right? And then finally, I want to talk about, here you go, the Kansas City Chiefs. Super Bowl champion teams don't become Super Bowl champion teams without a good offensive line. Michael Schwartz has been a second team or better All-Pro in each of his last four years. He never missed a game in the league. That's eight seasons, 128 games, 8,431 out of a possible 8,434 regular season snaps. That's right, he's only missed three snaps, three snaps in 128 eight seasons. Wow. Schwartz, <laughs> he ain't human, is he? I mean, come on. Three snaps, y'all. Even a cramp would get you out for more than three. But uh, having a non-human like Schwartz in your offensive line has got to make sure you are a good O-line, and that's exactly what the Chiefs are. They've also got Eric Fisher, who has strong pedigree, and rookie third-rounder Lucas Nang, who could push Laurent Demuve Tardif for the starting right guard slot. The rich get richer. The Chiefs get better. What an offensive line we have in Kansas City. So that's just a look at some of the offensive line. We're going to keep doing this, talking about fantasy football, talk about baseball as we go along. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. I'm going to be back with you on Thursday morning. I may try to do a show tonight around 7 o'clock. So how about you guys come back and join me. I want to thank Jeff for being on Facebook and being and the, you guys in the chat room are awesome. Uh, the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network family, uh, you guys, I want to really appreciate you and tell you how much I'm thankful that you listen, give me good feedback, and uh, listen to all of the podcasters there on the network. I've said it many times. It's a great group to follow. We try to provide you the best information we can to allow you to not only enjoy the sport, most of all, but also succeed in your fantasy leagues. So that's what it's about. And if I talked about an O-line this morning and you haven't drafted, you may want to talk about those quarterbacks on those teams, running backs on those teams, receivers on those teams, because the better the blocking, the better the protection, the better the stats are going to be. So uh, I want to, again, thank you guys for being here. I'll be back with you later tonight around 7 o'clock and on Thursday morning right here on Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports.